Rappers are often treated way differently in prison than a regular inmate. Being a high-profile individual, their cellmate situations are different, including their eating schedule. However, YNW Melly's situation is extremely disturbing. YNW Melly back in court today. His attorney saying the state has not given enough evidence to this point to keep him in jail, but prosecutors say they have proven plenty that shows he needs to remain behind bars. Oh, YNW Melly and YNW Bortland were arrested on February 13th, 2019 for the passing of YNW Sack Chaser and YNW Juvie. Melly was granted a mistrial in the case on July 22nd, 2023. However, YNW Melly was forced to return back to jail and he's been there ever since. Meanwhile, YNW Bortland was released on a bond for multiple years, making everyone wonder if both of them are charged with the same crime. Why is YNW Melly the only one inside a jail? The reason dates back to the week of the crime in 2019. YNW Borland was interrogated by police and he hinted towards him being the innocent one throughout the entire interview. And I'm driving, ducking for my life, trying to make sure so I don't get hit. And you telling me, you work, you telling me about this shit. I don't, man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make sure I don't get hit. I don't, I'm, man, I'm driving. I'm trying to make sure I don't get hit. You know what I'm saying? I, what I'm going to be worried about? You know what I'm yeah, saying? I, I know it's not for you to worry about. Shit crazy, bro. But if you tell me it happened there, there's got to be some evidence there. There's going to be broken glass, just like there's broken glass over here from when you guys open the, the doors and stuff like that. Okay, there's going to be broken glass over there when the windows got shut out. There's going to be casings from the people at your car okay there's gonna be stuff evidence over there okay right now there's nothing i kind of think i know what happened because i got information ever since ynw borland's interrogation melly has been the main suspect as the police believe that he's guilty of doing the crime towards both sack chaser and juvie with ynw melly sitting in a jail cell for the last five years his mother jamie king would end up revealing how his life is behind bars jamie king would reveal that she feels absolutely heartbroken for her son she feels so helpless as he's not even being treated as a human inside when you saw melly's statement just saying how he's been hurt, how he's scared for his life. As a mother, how did that make you feel? It's heartbreaking. It made me feel completely helpless. Broward Sheriff's Office definitely needs to be investigated. I mean, they, they are making up their own rules. We tried to go to court about this situation. The judge really doesn't have any uh, jurisdiction when it comes to the jail, because we actually had a hearing about the mistreatment of him. And the jail kind of, they make their own rules. And I don't think that's fair because I know that they need to answer to someone too. As she would begin ranting over the fact that YNW Melly has been granted a mistrial in his first trial, essentially beating the case, but he is still left inside a jail with no timeline on being released. As she would go on to reveal that YNW Melly is forced to sit in a dark cell for 23 hours a day, no phone to even call family, and he's not even allowed to look at his own mail. My son has not been convicted of anything and even other inmates that have been convicted or anything, they have the right to use a telephone. They have a right to just to be allowed to write letters to their loved ones, to receive their mail. They hold his mail. They don't give it to him. As YNW Melly's mother knew that she had to make a move to save her son, she would end up starting a petition to just have law officials look into Melly's situation. She would gather 50,000 signatures, and then it would later be announced. YNW Melly has been transferred from Broward County Jail to Paul Rain Detention Facility in Florida as he awaits for his retrial to resume. However, it gets a lot deeper than this, and allow me to explain. It would all begin with a viral comment sharing, I believe the Paul Rain detention facility is to house people struggling with mental illness. I really hope that YNW Melly is mentally okay. This makes many believe that YNW Melly is struggling a lot more than what we know, as we even caught a glimpse of how scared Melly's mother was for him, as during the original YNW Melly trial, when he was granted the mistrial, his lawyers requested YNW Melly to receive a bond out of jail or even be placed on house arrest, but sadly the judge denied it instantly and said that Melly must return back to jail. This would end up causing his mother to break down in tears right in the middle of the courtroom, causing YNW Melly to turn around, asking if she's okay. Mom. 
This would end up going viral on social media, getting the attention of all the rappers in the industry, as rap OG Boosie would go on to speak on the stress that Jamie King has been going through and how it will not get any better. Okay, so then sure? I met his mama while he was in. Oh, okay. I met his mom while he was in, and uh, she was, she was, she real, bro. You know, she real. She's stressed out. I heard she had a. Yeah, she real, and I, and I, you know, I, I reached my hand out to him. Uh, Cause I'm real. Yeah, I, I reached out to him, bro. I met his mom, and she a good, she a good woman, bro. And when I see them mamas like that, I, I it remind me of what my mom was going through, bro. However, YNW Melly's chance of receiving a house arrest agreement has gotten a lot better since this week. It would be announced, and I quote, YNW Melly's double M retrial is set for September 2025. This would end up having Jamie King rushing out of the courthouse to go live on Instagram to share the news. Free Melly till he's free. He's coming home, guys. Just patience. So we did have court today, him and Bort. They both had court. And so basically the judge put a new trial date in for September 10th of 2025. Please make it make sense. I just, I don't know. I don't know. At this point, they need to just dismiss the case. So, and uh, yeah, he still doesn't have phone calls. Still no visitation. He's still um, in the new facility all alone by himself no contact he's not allowed to have contact with any other inmates they move him around with several guards it's it's like something you never with the trial being so far away lawyers online would even react sharing that ynw melly's lawyers will definitely be pushing for a bond or house arrest grant from the new judge ynw melly has been in jail for over five years and it's likely that it could be granted however there's only one thing preventing it ynw melly was just hit with new charges alongside ynw Bortland. the state filing six new charges against demons and two others who were allegedly involved the charges include tampering with a witness directing the activities of a criminal solicitation or conspiracy to commit tampering and unlawful use of a two-way communication device. Now, a couple of those charges actually carry a life in prison sentence if there's a conviction. YNW Melly, his real name is Jamel Demons. He's actually in plain clothes in the courtroom for the first time in months. Again, as this judge really starts the long process of seating a new jury. As these new charges have led to YNW Borland finally being placed inside a jail alongside YNW Melly. However, now they're in different jails. These new charges are all connected to YNW Bortland's massive mistake, as YNW Juvie's father would go on to expose how YNW Melly and Bortland were witness tampering, and even what code words they used to make Melly's ex-girlfriend to not testify against YNW Melly in the original trial. Both uh, Melly, Jamel Demons, YNW Melly, and uh, Cortland Henry, who is known as YNW Bortland, are now charged with witness tampering. It sounds like the prosecutors are saying there was this kind of crazy way that Melly was communicating. He wasn't allowed to use the phone, but he was passing notes to people. And then this person's calling this person and then that person. They like to me, they going through extreme measures to try to cover up or convince people not to testify like Mariah, Mariah mom. They was using cold words like Rihanna and ASAP Rocket's baby mom and then on top of that it would be announced not only four hours later that YNW Bortland was arrested for the witness tampering charges as while he was being arrested the feds would end up raiding his household and they ended up finding insane paperwork against Melly and Bortland that will lead to more charges against Bortland. Melly's co-defendant YNW Bortland was booked into a Miami jail Monday night and is being held behind bars on an out-of-county warrant. We just confirmed the warrant is out of Brown County for witness tampering. The warrant obtained by Long Crime Network states as follows. On or about April 10, 2023, continuing through and including July 22, 2023, Cortland Henry, aka Bortland, along with others, did unlawfully and knowingly engage in misleading conduct toward another person with the intent to cause or induce them to withhold testimony. 
The warrant continues the alleged witness had been summoned by the legal process to the jury trial of Jamel Demons, aka Y&W Melly. The dates in the warrant are important. Jury selection for Melly started in mid-April, and a judge declared a mistrial on July 22nd, the same day the warrant claims Bortland allegedly tampered with the witness. As it would then be announced, and I quote, here are the images of alleged notes discovered during the home raid of YNW Bortland's home last week, as filed into the Brower clerks. Alongside these photos here of YNW Bortland drawing on pieces of paper where certain jurors were sitting during the original Melly trial, and even a description of what they looked like. You may not believe that this is a serious thing, but to understand, here's DJ Academics breaking everything down. To keep it real, this is sloppy. Portland, how the f*** you gonna have the notebook of the jurors in your house? Like, God damn. Holy sh**. You know what I mean? Like, brother, like, come the f*** on. It, 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 it's like, it's like doing a and, and having the, the surveillance tape in your DVD player or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. Like, like they raid your crib and and the and the, the surveillance footage of the is in your DVD player. They're like, oh, okay, thank you, brother. This can't be at your crib. So now with the new evidence being entered into the case alongside the new charges, they just aligned it very perfectly with new hard evidence against YNW Melly for the crime of Sack Chaser and Juvie. There is a new lead prosecutor going against YNW Melly. He mentioned that he's just going to make it look very simple to the jury that Melly's guilty, as he would begin his file with a new piece of evidence from a man named Jay Hood, a close friend of late King Vaughn, who shared a secret that YNW Melly told King Vaughn, then King Vaughn told a bunch of people at Oblong on one night. Did Vaughn really tell you that Melly told him that he was two friends? He ain't come out and say, like, we got into an argument. And so, you know, if, if, if you know, when people could say something without saying it. And so he told me, like, once I posted what I posted, he, Vaughn was mad at me, bro. Why you put up there, bro? Walk the bam. I'm like, you, you sitting up here, like, you know the love we got. You do this for us, but you gonna trust that a his two friends and he said them was trying to extort him and so i'm like if they was trying to extort him then, then, then why are you still around them as jay hood would end up revealing that sack chaser and juvie were allegedly going after melly for financial gain this ended up leaving many people believing that when ynw melly asked king vaughn for advice on how to handle the situation with sack chaser and juvie that king vaughn gave him some personal advice that he has done many times himself if you know anything about king vaughn's criminal history you would likely know how he would have handled the situation himself now this ends up leading into the other evidence from ynw melly cell phone where there would be text messages of Melly literally admitting to doing the crime. The PZ Gambino account asked him if he was okay and his response was I did that and placed a smiley face emoji. And the next message from 1026 2018 at 1602 the YNW Melly count says what? After that shh S-H-H-H-H which when you add this evidence into the concerning evidence shared by Sergeant Williams, it really starts to paint a picture on what went down, as he would go on to reveal that there is no way this could have been a drive-by after investigating the Jeep they were driving in. Number she said 17 outside the car. How many rounds were inside the car? Three. And can you exclude the for Mr. Williams and Mr. Thomas is coming from outside of the car. Yes, that uh, has some movement in it, which is round uh, site L here. The, uh, the is actually moving in that to create the, uh, the little bit of a that you see there. With Williams revealing the crime must have occurred inside of the vehicle they were driving in, this is then when YNW Juvie's mother would go to the stand and share who was sitting where Sergeant Williams said the crime happened at. Uh, can you state your name? Your full name for the jury? Um, Leon Phillips. Okay. And um, are you related to one of the in this case? Yes, I am. How so? I'm his mother. And who is that? Christopher Thomas. Positive 219.15. Um, Ms. Phillips, did you see who entered into the occupants who entered into that gray, gray Jeep? Mm -hmm. And is that a yes? Yes. Do you recognize where your son entered that gray Jeep? Yes. Which seat? 
if you can identify for the jury. Um, he got in the back seat on the um, right hand side. Did you recognize the individual that got into the back seat on the left side, the rear driver side? Yes. And who was that individual? Jamel. And Jamel, is that the defendant? Jamel Demons? Yes, ma'am. With all of the new police files shared in the latest court hearing, we would end up seeing Boosie react again, sharing that the feds will be doing anything possible to get YNW Melly and keep him in jail. Now they're putting even more charges on him and then... Um... When they want you, they want you. I knew that. I knew they wanted them bad when they waited for that law to get passed. They waited oh, so all the way... The penalty. So it'd be 8-4. Oh, right. Yeah. When they waited all the way to that law got passed to take him to trial. Yeah, he was in jail for what, two years, three years? Yeah, they could have been took you to trial. You're right. They waited till that law got passed and took him to trial a couple months later. When they want you, they want you, man. Uh, I just don't see how he didn't get a bun after a fucking mistrial. Yeah. That made me like, God damn. Yeah. Like, after a mistrial, that doesn't, that, that doesn't happen, really. Rapper Pooh Shicey's jail situation is a lot better than YNW Melly's. However, jail is still jail. No matter what, Pooh Shicey is still in there because Memphis rapper Pooh Shicey was seen getting emotional inside of court. This was due to his lawyers getting him released early as a recent report would share. Expect a court hearing from Memphis rapper Pooh Shicey with good behavior his release date is coming up based on these factors. Where the report would list several reasons for his early release as when Pooh Shicey was originally arrested, he created what's known as a proffer deal with the feds. Many rappers looked at it like it was snitching, however, it really wasn't, as even Big 30 would have to go on to defend Pooh Shiesty. Oh, my mama, if you see his paperwork, if you see his paperwork, my mama, I do whatever y'all tell me to do, because my eyebrows, mustache, hair, I throw my chains in the river and jump in and if Shiesty snitch. Uh, go on, take one to the... I ain't got no more. Uh. With rappers calling him out for snitching, who I see would end up reacting from it from his jail cell with a long message. To understand the message, we first need to share his release date and learn how Pooh will be released early. Academics explain that Pooh current jail situation isn't normal for somebody that has committed his type of charges, which left many believing that he actually did snitch. It's due to Pooh who look like he's absolutely chilling in jail. My boy got a little Richard Millie. You know what I mean? Got got the hair cut all right. You know what I mean? I heard got, they, be playing, uh, they be playing Fortnite Mobile. In, in jail? Oh, he got the Tim's on. They look fresh as well. Yo, this so chilling in, in prison. He got two watches. Like, you know what I mean? Like, two watches. Not even. What? For the crimes that Boosh Icy committed, the last thing that he should be doing is sitting inside of a jail cell playing Fortnite Mobile. But in the original crime documents, it states that Boosh Icy and his boy met up with a high-end sneaker seller as well as someone that sells narcotics. Boosh is seen arriving to the meet, driving a bright green McLaren. While awaiting the seller's arrival, Shiesty and his boy created a plan to steal the items against the two sellers rather than buy them. Once the sellers arrived, the seller gave Shiesty the sneaker to do a legit check on them. This gave Ushaisi's boy enough time to get into position for what is about to go down. While negotiating on a price for the goods, a small argument then brewed up between Ushaisi and the seller, leading Shiesty to grab for his firearm from out of his waistband. When Shiesty was seen grabbing his firearm, the two men started sprinting away, trying to duck for cover behind their own vehicle. However, they were not quick enough. Shiesty ended up hitting both of them, hitting one in the backside as well as hitting one in the hip. While Ushaisi was handling the two men, Shiesty's boy was in charge of grabbing the sneakers and anything else they had inside of their car and throw everything inside of the McLaren. While Shiesty is making sure his job is done before sprinting to the driver's side of the McLaren, Shiesty would then open up his McLaren door. The vehicle had what's known as a butterfly door, meaning that the car doors go upwards, as while the car door was going up, there was a Louis Vuitton bag in the side door pocket that then fell onto the ground, as Pooh Shiesty didn't realize that he dropped his bag as he 
he heard police sirens coming from down the street, so he was in a hurry. The Louis Vuitton bag had $40,912 in cash, and it actually played a huge role in the evidence against Shiesty, but more on that later. Who Shiesty and his boy then drove to the closest Miami airport where he rented a private jet and flew straight out of Miami, Florida. While in the air, Shiesty would post two photos to his Instagram of him literally flexing the all green McLaren he just committed an armed robbery in. This would then lead to Bushaisi being arrested in the following days. The town of Bay Harbor Island says you're wanted with a He's also charged with armed robbery, battery in their affidavit, saying the two left the state in a private jet. Once he was booked into jail, he ended up bonding out for $30,000 thanks to Gucci Mane. Then after being on bond for roughly two months, Shaisi would be officially arrested and placed into side of the courtroom. Mr. Williams, you were arrested for pursuant to an arrest warrant. It was issued June 3rd, it's charging you. You have two attorneys here. Or is it three? I'm sorry, two attorneys in the state. Go ahead. You want to announce again? Brad Cohen and Sam Zegni for uh, the defendant. Right. Have you had a chance to review Yes, Judge, we have. This would then lead into DJ Academics tweeting, Breaking. Who Shiesty sentenced to 63 months inside of prison? He was facing eight years. 63 months for firearm charges and robbery is extremely low, and it is for one specific reason. Who Shiesty created what's known as a proffer deal with the feds. As a proffer deal is when the criminal details new information to the feds relating to the offense for which immunity, or in Shiesty's case, a lesser sentence is then granted. Shiesty used the proffer deal to have his charges of eight years to life in prison in exchange for just a 63-month sentence. As many rappers would then call out Pushaisi for working with the feds, giving them information on the case and those involved. Now, it does sound like he did snitch, but in reality, Pushaisi only snitched on himself, as academics would also reveal that Shiesty's about to be released soon. And I think he's coming home like next year, maybe the year after. However, it looked like he's, you know, taking responsibility of whatever happened and doing his time, not crying clearly trying to let people know he's straight and i do think when he comes back out granted as long as it's not like too far from now if he comes back in a year he's good i still think even within two years he's good as shiesty will be released soon due to him and the judge having an agreement the judge wanted poo shiesty to write out all of the mistakes that he made in his crime and so then he can learn from his mistake to never do it again now the first mistake that he made was that he committed an armed robbery right beside a police station the footage you see here is actually recorded from police station cameras across the street once the sound of firearms in the area were heard several police cars would end up driving up the street all the way to the parking lot and with law enforcement knowing the exact location of the armed robbery it didn't take them long to just look through the recording tapes from the video camera across the street also with the police arriving to the scene as fast as they did they are the ones that retrieved the louis vuitton bag who had zero time to get his bag back that had forty thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars in cash the feds already had an idea of who committed this crime so they went to push instagram and they downloaded a few photos one of the photos on shiesty's instagram has Pushaisti doing a money stretch with $100 bills across of his body. The feds ended up zooming in on these photos to where they could see the serial numbers on the bills, and with creative police work, they realized that one of the serial numbers on the bill in the photo matches one of the bills inside of the Louis Vuitton bag, basically confirming that the Louis V bag is Shiesty's. This would then lead into the biggest mistake of them all, as Pushaisti would post a selfie with the all-green McLaren that he committed an armed robbery in the exact same day that he did. It. Exactly one hour and 30 minutes after committing the armed robbery, while he was in the private jet leaving Miami, Florida, Shiesty posted selfies of him flexing the all green McLaren that he committed an armed robbery in, and one of the photos even showed the license plate. And it wouldn't even be a year later than while he was in prison, Shiesty's team would also release a music video titled Gone MIA, flexing the same all green McLaren again. Rappers would continue though calling Boo Shiesty a snitch and even working with the feds. 
kids. This would make Shiesty extremely angry because he didn't actually snitch on anyone. He only had to snitch on himself. So Boo Shiesty would send a message from his jail cell where he would call out all of the ops that are disrespecting him where the message reads, King Shiesty tapping in from the middle of the penitentiary, aka a bad place, where they say that I can't go, jailing no telling, I still remain untouched, millions still in double digits, tell Google to fix my net worth as we could verify it right now. I was 21 up, 8 figures, Jay-Z can't even relate to my money. I tripled my followers, stop playing with my name before I buy one of you, you guys aren't anything. I put on for the CG stuff every day and twice on Sundays. I'm the same man from Tokyo to Tennessee. I'm not gonna go fed because I'm not getting scared, none one ever play with me free or in jail. I'm still the man of Memphis, still the king no matter what jungle, slick, almost the same man, just a little more powerful, you know what I'm talking about baby Larry, how are you gonna let a man in the feds outdo you, you can't even beat me at crawling backwards, you're gonna have to get your hand and stick game up before you could do some, stop playing with me so much, but for my fans, supporters and loved ones holding me down every day, keep keeping it solid, I promise it doesn't go unnoticed, the rest of you guys though are done, keep hating, false advertising, backbiting and calling me out, it's up and it's stuck like a tree house, I'm touching down, I got a Dorito on my shoulder and I'm going 100%, as Shiesty in jail is still standing tall, and he would even share a message during an interview right before he was arrested. Really when I got signed, but I'm gonna tell you before, the part before I got signed, like breaking news. Mm. The verse on breaking news yeah. made everybody go crazy, and folks start saying I'm their favorite rapper already, so right. I'm gonna stop. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just made me go hard. So the success kind of gave you the confidence to really for keep sure. it up? Yeah, they rock with me for sure. Man. It's in my first verse. However, K Flock's case is beginning to move quickly inside of the court system because there has been good news circulating around K Flock's court case that hints towards his official release date as K Flock would release a message to his fans from his jail cell. I, I, I have no going on, man. Flock, I have no something to do. Man, like, see me, see the guys, man. Hey, yo, like, I'll be back real soon. Shout out to my fans and my supporters, man. I love all y'all, man. For all of you out there, the violence, man. For me, and do what y'all supposed to do, man. Get, for me, get through life correctly, man. Like, get money. Man. Now this relates to what K Flock's best friend B Love said during a recent interview with No Jumper. He would go on to reveal that there is so many things happening in K Flock's case that no one even knows about, as well as what K Flock's lawyers are doing behind the scenes on working on an early release date for the New York rapper. Okay, but so I saw some fans who were off at both me and academics <laughs> after k Flock got locked up because that. well just because yeah. i guess like you know in our tone when we talked about it yeah. you know it might have seemed like we were being a little too presumptuous yeah. but is that weird for you because i'm sure you see people all the way from rappers to whoever acting like you know your boy is just done and the, 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 he's, he's cooked in this situation yeah. i ain't gonna lie people such the people that don't even be knowing, like, y'all don't even know what's going on, bro. Yeah. As fans around the world are starting to get the sense that K-Flock's lawyers are trying to get him out of jail as fast as they can for one specific reason. It begins with the newest court files that goes and reads, on December 23rd, 2021, New York rapper K-Flock, otherwise known as Kevin Perez, was involved in a situation leading to the passing of a man named Oscar Hernandez. On December 23rd, Kevin Perez, aka K-Flock, was walking down the street in New York City, K Flock is seen on surveillance footage walking past a barber shop with two other individuals, one being identified as K Flock's sister. K Flock is seen wearing the blue coat as well as a shiesty mask as well. While walking past the barber shop, K Flock is seen locking in eyes with somebody that is standing inside of the barber shop, with that man being Oscar Hernandez. Whether the two knew each other from ongoing street related things, or if the two just locked eyes and then had instant beef with each each other, whatever it was, it all resulted in a very bad incident where Oscar Hernandez would quickly run out of the barber shop, then yelling at K Flock in the middle of the street, saying, What are you looking at? A small argument then brewed up between the two in the street. Very recently, K Flock's lawyers would basically confirm that Oscar Hernandez would then begin grabbing at his waistband, trying to scare K Flock into thinking that he has a firearm on him. But little did Oscar Hernandez know that K Flock actually did have a firearm on him. So when Oscar 
Oscar Hernandez reached out his firearm, trying to get K-Flock to flinch. K-Flock then actually pulled out his firearm from his waistband. When Flock was reaching for it, Hernandez turned. He tried running into a store that is located beside the barber shop. However, K-Flock began using his firearm in what he thought was self-defense, as Oscar made the initial move of reaching for a firearm that he didn't even have. K-Flock would end up connecting him with his firearm. All that was left at the scene of the crime was shell casings, as well as Oscar's slides that he was wearing. Now, the case was cold for 24 hours. No one even fully understood what happened or who even committed the crime, as Shicey was wearing a mask. This was, however, until the NYPD tweeted a photo of the main suspect, asking for help from the public, where fans online would begin to immediately know that it was K-Flock. Two hours before the crime, K-Flock actually was flexing this exact designer outfit on Instagram Live. The NYPD then put out a warrant for K-Flock's arrest, which immediately resulted in Flock hiring the best lawyer in New York City. Then the two would then walk into the NYPD 30th precinct together, where K-Flock would then turn himself in. His lawyer would then release the statement, I accompanied K-Flock as he self-surrendered to detectives in the 30th precinct. Arrangements were immediately made with the NYPD once I learned that he was wanted. As to the charges against him, we have begun our own investigation into the allegations. More importantly, considering the DA's significant disclosure this morning that the NYPD received a tip saying that somebody else was the hitter, we demanded the DA's office to provide disclosure of the videos referenced in the complaint and more information on the tip. We will address bail once we have had a chance to review the case and we can further investigate. With it being over a year since KFLOX lawyers released that statement, I can confidently say the person that gave the NYPD the tip that somebody else was the hitter and not KFLOX was actually a New York drill rapper fan that ended up trolling the NYPD. KFLOX lawyers were already aware of it, but then they went out with a new statement where they would truly believe that KFLOX was acting in self-defense and they would confirm it on the live news. When the guy hits the ground, and is found, he's got a loaded that was in his pocket that his hand was on at the time. You know, we consider that to be self-defense. So he did take him in self-defense? That's what the allegation is. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the details of the case, okay. but the government claims that he pulled the but at the same time, the person that was ground had his hand on a loaded, illegal loaded apparently about Kevin. Okay. So without saying too much, you're arguing obviously self-defense. That's the correct. You know that, that that could be one of the arguments, self-defense. And I, I would say to the public, you know, somebody's walking up to you with a loaded, pretty clear is going to use it, mm -hmm. with a criminal record a mile long. Do you want to get, or do you not want it? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't hesitate to pull. After KFLOX lawyers released that statement, the NYPD would then release their own. The NYPD believed the incident was street-related based on KFLOX's documented affiliation with the Bronx-based Third Side Street Team. It was documented that KFLOX was heavily involved in street-related acts within the time of the crime, so him being a big-name figure inside of New York City, he had lots of control on situations, as well as being a main target that his ops would retaliate against. However, that actually works in KFLOX's favor and his lawyers are convinced and are even making the claim that situation was an act of self-defense due to so many ops wanting to retaliate against K-Flock. Now, K-Flock's lawyers are putting out positive evidence that they could beat this case as even rappers would begin reacting. What's it like for you watching the, the K-Flock thing happen? That's crazy. <laughs> Next big I'm, artist coming out of New I York. I love Flock, so I like that. I like that. that. That's my guess. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I'm just, I'm wishing them the best right now. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, for the alleged charges they pushing on him, I'm saying I'm wishing his family the best. I'm wishing the whole team the best and everything. You know what I'm saying, and I'm hope he beat them alleged charges. You know what I'm saying, because wow. he got a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of future brightness. He got, and I hope you know what I'm saying everything just wake all the young kids up, like how fat it just. Right. You know what I'm saying. That would be, be a sad story then, if that's the end of the. No, we ain't gonna think like that, you right. know what I'm saying? You gotta stay positive. As once things were looking amazing for K-Flock, his lawyers were building up enough evidence to prove that it was self-defense. It would then be announced the following day, Bronx drill rapper K-Flock was just indicted by a federal grand jury for a bunch of new racketeering conspiracy charges, also known as RICO. This had hip-hop creators reacting, K-Flock just caught a RICO, it's really over. Academics even said, the feds just unsealed an indictment on K-Flock for a RICO charge 
charge. The minimum mandatory if he doesn't beat those charges or snitch is life inside of prison. He is still facing state charges that has him locked up. Pray for him. Now this relates perfectly to what Boosie said about YNW Melly. Right when K Flock was about to submit evidence proving that it was self-defense to beat the case, the feds come out of nowhere and then charge him with Rico. Now they're putting even more charges on him and then um when they want you, they want you. I knew that I knew they wanted them bad when they waited for that law to get passed. They waited oh, so all the way. The penalty. So it'd be eight four. Oh right. Yeah. You know, they waited all the way to that law got passed to take him to trial. Yeah, he was in jail for what, two years, three years? Yeah. They could have been took you to trial. You're right. They waited till that law got passed and took him to trial a couple months later. When they want you, they want you, man. Uh, I just don't see how he didn't get a bond after a fucking mistrial. Yeah. That made me like, God damn. Yeah. Like, after a mistrial, that doesn't, that, that doesn't happen, really. This entire situation honestly makes it feel like the police department are corrupt. K Flock should be released from jail by now. Even his lawyers agree as they would end up reacting to the new RICO charge, sharing, we are not surprised by the federal charges as we have been defending Kevin State charges for over a year now. Considering the incident was a clear act of self-defense, it wasn't a particularly strong charge, but now that it is being used as a basis point for a possible penalty charge is extraordinary. On video, it is crystal clear that Kevin was about to be affected after attempting to walk away from the other person. Only then did Kevin use an item to defend himself and another from an armed team member who was about to pull a firearm from out of his pocket. Now, if this wasn't enough to prove to you that they're going to do anything to keep K-Flock inside of jail, academics would go on and tweet, K-Flock's co-defendant Sticky says, the police came to him asking him to snitch on K-Flock and he told them, no, I'll see you in 30 years. Years. Sharing this Instagram photo is Sticky and K Flock on the street in New York City, along with a caption of, We did stuff at RL together. I guess we gotta defend our freedom against these people together as well. It's all fun and games until the people come. They said, Tell us about Kevin. Help yourself. 30 years is a long time. Well, I guess I'll see y'all in 30 years. Which it is nice to know that his best friend is gonna hold it down for him. But what you need to remember is, there was 30 people indicted on this Rico charge. The odds of 30 people staying loyal to K-Flock and not taking the 30-year charge is very, very low. Another rapper sitting in jail wondering if he'll ever be released is Young Thug. The YSL Rico trial just changed forever. Even Lil Baby had to say, it's about time Thug's coming home. Slime's been in the cell too long, the trial is over, judge is crazy. As it was just announced that Judge Glanville had been recused from the YSL Rico trial after Young Thug and his co-defendants petitioned to have him removed. As the judge is officially gone from the entire YSL case, it would then lead into announcement of Judge Ingram has been assigned as the new judge in Young Thug's YSL Rico trial, as rap lawyers would end up reacting to the new judge in the case, and they would give opinions on what this actually means. I smell Rico charges. Judge Glanville has been recused from the YSL trial. This is the order from Judge Rachel Kraus granting the motion to recuse Judge Glanville from the case. Now, Will this case continue with a new judge taking over midway? I don't think so. I think you have to start from scratch, which means new jury, that new judge is gonna have to come up with, come up to speed with all of the evidentiary rulings that have happened in this case. And then you start all over again. When is this trial supposed to finish? 2030? It's a damn shame because this guy probably had a great long career. He was the chief judge in Fulton County. He's a military veteran. He's probably a very accomplished individual, but his legacy will be nothing more than he was extremely biased. He had, had it out for the defendants. As the famous rap lawyer believes that the RICO charges against the 20 YSL members are now practically non-existent. As Judge Glanville was at the top of the entire court system in Atlanta, and he even folded in the YSL RICO case. Lawyers don't believe any judge will be up to the task to just come into the trial, read all of the transcripts, and then be up to date with everything. As the famous rap lawyer would then go on to explain Young Thug's next move, which also hints towards his release date. What's 
next in the YSL case, we have a new judge. Judge Ingram has been assigned the case. You're going to see a couple of motions filed by each of the defendants. First, they're going to file a motion for bond. Second, they're going to file a motion for a mistrial. The bond argument is easy. They're going to argue he's been locked up forever. Now he's going to be locked up for God knows how long is forever. Can we get him a bond? The argument for a mistrial is going to be very interesting. They're going to go to Judge Ingram and they're going to say, Judge Ingram. You're going to have to pick up this case midway. You're going to have to make all these rulings going forward. But before you can do that, you got to read about everything that's happened. you got to read about the court transcript, every line from the longest trial in Georgia history. This is already the longest trial ever. Then you're going to have to read about all the motions, evidentiary objections, pre-trial rulings, in-trial rulings. It's going to take you God knows how long before the trial is ready to resume. And will the jury be ready to resume? They've already been out for weeks. As the madness would continue in the YSL trial is not only one day later, the second judge would then also leave the entire case. It would be announced the new judge assigned to the YSL RICO trial recuses herself only after two days of being on the case. This now makes it a third judge needing to come in, take over the YSL RICO trial, read all of the transcripts and get to know the jury, then the trial could start again. Now this is absolute madness. Kodak Black's lawyer would even react saying, and I quote, the case and the judge is off the reservation. This is an instant mistrial. I cannot believe the judge thinks that taking a defense attorney into custody isn't a mistrial. As the madness of needing extra judges all started when Judge Glanville thought that it was okay to have young thugs defense attorney Brian arrested in the middle of the courtroom. Take Mr. Take Mr. Steele in the custody, please. Yes, sir, you certainly may. Mr. Williams does not wish to go forward without me being here. You are removing me against um, his will, my will, you're taking away his right to counsel. And you're conducting material parts of this trial without me present, and I can't learn about it by watching online. So for that reason, additionally, I asked for a mistrial. And now, Judge Glanville wanted Brian arrested because Brian wasn't snitching. The prosecutors were trying to pin evidence against Young Thug for allegedly taking somebody's life. However, Brian Steele got intel from a source of his relating to YSL Woody being the guilty one of doing the crime. However, the judge's corner was the only few people that were supposed to know about that intel for right now. When Brian Steele would make it public to the entire courtroom, including live stream, the judge would go absolutely off on Brian Steele, asking how in the world do you know this, and if you don't tell, we're gonna arrest you. Take Mr. Take Mr. Steele in the custody, please. Yes, sir, you certainly may. Mr. Williams does not wish to go forward without me being here. You are removing me against um, his will, my will. You're taking away his right to counsel. And you're conducting material parts of this trial without me present. And I can't learn about it by watching online. So for that reason, additionally, I asked for a mistrial. And As right here, Brian Steele is standing on business for his client. He's sticking to the literal street code of never snitch, never tell. This left sources saying that Young Thug was shaking his head up and down, showing that he respects what his lawyer just did. Now, Judge Glanville wasn't done with Brian. He would end up revealing that Brian's jail sentence would be 10 weekends inside a jail, being a total of 20 days. He asks that if the appeal doesn't get him a bond, Brian wants to know, can he spend the weekends in jail with young thug being bunkmates with his client. Judge Glanville did agree. However, this was until Brian's team of 40 lawyers stormed the courtroom, getting Brian Steele released from his jail duties on a bond. However, the madness doesn't end here. And what's next relates to young thug's release day. As reports would come out sharing, and I quote, young thug's co-counsel Keith Adams just said that he has the same information as Brian Steele, and he has now filed a motion for a mistrial. This would leave hip hop reporters sharing, and I quote, the young thug YSL 
so trial is in shambles. Surely this is a mistrial within 24 hours. Even leaving Lil Baby saying, give Thug a mistrial and free slime. The mistrial will happen for one specific reason and allow me to explain. It's all based on the prosecutors literally not doing their jobs correctly. It goes and reads that the judge in Young Thug's trial was arguing with the state because they were unprepared with evidence. That's too late. The evidence is excluded. The evidence is excluded. I'm going to exclude. I'm going to exclude because I told you that this was going to happen. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No, 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 no. We're excluding that. This is the last. The, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I am not going to tolerate this any further. If you don't get together with your colleagues and flag issues and 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 resolve them promptly, and if I have to take them up, remember. I can exclude them, we'll work the weekends, or we'll do a combination of both. So this time, I'm gonna exclude, I'm gonna exclude, I'm gonna exclude that, those two sections. There's nothing in I am not gonna, I am not gonna have any, I'm not gonna have any more discussion about this, madam, I'm not. I don't, well, you know what? And I attempted to try to talk to them earlier this week. Well, then that's, yeah, well, that's why we have to. I'm not punishing anybody. This would then lead into the prosecutors having a meltdown inside a court, where it would be announced an ex-investigator with the Atlanta police took the stand under cross-examination on Monday in the YSL RICO trial. During one moment, former investigator Lakia got into a brief exchange with defense attorney Max. And D'Angelo White's response was, we had correct yes he did say that and it was more to that as well we had guns and sh yes he stated that. okay we being plural correct correct are you insulting my intelligence by asking if we means plural i think you are though okay i um, think you are all right well it's sir don't put don't don't do that don't do that all right, sir, let's be respectful to our witness, okay? I'm very respectful, Judge, and I always will. I doubt it. As the entire mistrial is going to happen because the Atlanta Police Department are trying to lie about evidence on Young Thug. This would even lead into Brian Steele calling out the entire Atlanta Police Department for lying about the evidence. Which reads, Your Honor, as my eyes roll, I'm about to show you why I don't believe the city of Atlanta at all. I have no recording of whom. Who, 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 okay. Detective Lewis at the hospital, Grady Hospital, September 11, 2013, meets with Walter Murphy. And your honor, as my eyes roll out of my head, I'm about to show you why I do not believe the city of Atlanta Police Department at all. This is served in discovery. I will mark it Mr. Williams C and D. And then you tell me if I'm supposed to believe the allegations from the state of Georgia. As this is where everything would get heated inside of the courtroom, the judge would end up calling out Brian Steele for stating that the Atlanta Police Department lies about evidence because this could jeopardize Brian's entire career. Stating that an entire police department lies could definitely affect his entire career. Well, I'm not conceding that. Well, I, I, I'm gonna tell you that I haven't heard anything that would indicate that that that's truth. Yeah, well, you, that you, have a, you have a good faith basis to ask that. You haven't heard anything of who he spoke with. That's my point. That's the point. He's but the, but, but you all can't, but you two, neither one of you can proffer that. Judge. It's pro, it's not proper, Mr. Steele. No, no, no. Listen. It's not. It, it, it would be a violation before me for you to, for you to put that in front of this jury. In the September 17, 2000. You are saying to the court that you have a belief that there is another statement out there. There's not. Why could you, how could you say that? Because there, it hasn't been brought up. If, if, it, if it gets brought up, then we'll correct it at that point in time. But right now, I'm going to direct you not to, not to inquire that line. You don't have a basis to do so. As the evidence that they're discussing is based around a man named Adrian Bean. The Atlanta Police Department are trying to use evidence against Young Thug that Adrian told them in 2013. However, now in 2024, Adrian says he doesn't remember giving them the evidence. As the original report reads, Adrian Bean is not bound by a plea deal. He was a part of a 2013 crime where four people were involved, but one escaped and was never caught. They need Bean to snitch on Young Thug on the stand like he did in 2013. However, now 
now he refuses. As Adrian did originally snitch on Young Thug in 2013 to avoid jail time. Young Thug was the one person that was able to escape the crime and was never caught. But now, since the police took over a decade to start the Rico takedown of Atlanta, Adrian has now forgot about the crime as the police were just had an understanding that he would end up snitching again. But now he doesn't want to. After you answer the question, which you have to do, because I don't remember none of, nothing that happened in 2013. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. I understand. What I have to do is mm -hmm. ask you some questions and determine what you do and don't remember. So what is your response as to whether or not you recognize the images shown in Defendant's Exhibit Number 8? I don't remember. All right. And I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit Number 81. Do you recognize what's shown there? No, ma'am. Right. What about number 101 for defendant exhibits? You see a car, but I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. Is your answer the same for defendant's exhibit number 82, number 89, and defendant's exhibit 90? Yes, ma'am. Lots can happen within 11 years as the crime did occur in 2013. Some sources claim that YSL members could have paid Adrian off to not snitch, but others believe that he actually did forget, as Adrian would go on to reveal why he forgot. I really don't have any knowledge about 2013, ma'am. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. I don't really have any knowledge about 2013. Once I have went to prison and came home from prison and done my time, everything that happened in 2013, or whatever has been put behind me and set forth so I've been, you know, working and, and just doing my thing since I came home from prison. I don't have no knowledge of nothing that happened 10 years ago. As the prosecutors need him badly to snitch on Young Thug again, as the YSL Rico trial has been going on for two years, and the only evidence that they have shared about Young Thug is from an investigator who would go on to reveal that Lil Wayne has the same street affiliation as Young Thug. And are you familiar with who this individual is? I am. And who is that? It's uh, Wayne Carter. Okay. And does he have another name that he goes by? He does. And what is it? Lil Wayne. And are you aware, um, do any of your non-trans experience, if Mr. Um, Carter, Dwayne Carter, identif self-identifies as a member of I believe that he does. Okay. Tell the jury if you need to stand with the stick and point to what those identifiers are within Defense Exhibit 31. There's a large MOB across his chest, um, often used particularly by West Coast but um, is used across the country. Um, he has five um, red five-point stars across his chest. As the investigator is literally just trying to prove to the jury that rappers have street affiliations, as the second piece of evidence would be about YNW Melly, as the two rappers were involved in a Facebook post together where the investigator would try to make the claim that Young Thug and YSL are connected in the streets to YNW Melly's team, YNW. Same thing, the use of the uh, slap term, Five point star, snake. Uh, he's saying he's YSL, saying he's like, I'm Doug. And uh, he puts up his YNW uh, for life hashtag on it with the uh, five point star as well. Mr. Demons had you know, big B hand signs posted, uh, displayed. I'm trying to see the individuals again. I'm assuming that's also young Doug. Also, I don't know. Yes. Also important to your investigation, correct? Yes. Also publicly available for anyone to see and capture. However, another six rappers currently in jail is Tory Lanez, Fetty Wap, Blueface, Max B, and YFN Lucci, giving a total of 10 rappers that are currently sitting inside a jail.